And uh, this is a very unusual uh, seminar time for us. So I just accidentally today in the morning while cross-checking my emails uh, figured that actually the, the time is 10 a.m. and not 4 or 5 p.m., which I wanted to figure actually more precisely. So I send a, uh, another uh, email to everyone. I hope it reached uh, all of us. Uh, and um, right, so let me introduce our speaker. And uh, while I'm doing that, maybe some other people will still continue to join. So our speaker today is uh, Professor Luis Yanzi Morales Molina. And he was supposed to be with us uh, by that time uh, as a visitor here at uh, uh, IBS, but for obvious reasons, uh, he couldn't join. Uh, and that's why we scheduled uh, this seminar today and uh, shifted or postponed his uh, visit into uh, a, a time maybe next year or uh, whenever this uh, pandemic situation uh, will evaporate to some extent. So uh, Luis is uh, Cuban by birth. He was, uh, he was born in this fantastic uh, city which is called Camagüey. How do you pronounce it, Luis? Camagüey. Camagüey, amazing. Camagüey. I mean, it's not written like that, but it's uh, come away. So he went away from there after after uh, doing some, of course, uh, studies in uh, school and uh, in also in university, which he uh, finished uh, in 1998 with a diploma or a master. And then uh, he uh, continued with a scholarship uh, at uh, the University of Havana, but then soon uh, thereafter he went for a PhD uh, to uh, the University of Bayreuth in Germany, uh, which uh, he finished successfully with research on uh, ratchet dynamics in uh, nonlinear uh, wave equations, I would say probably, uh, on lattices uh, and not only probably, um, in 2005. And then uh, he moved on uh, from there to a, uh, well, he writes here postdoctoral fellow, but actually it's a Gastwissenschaft, it's a guest scientist or whatever. It's a, it's a, it's a rather independent uh, research fellow position at the Max Planck Institute for Physics of Complex Systems in Dresden, where he stayed for three years. And that's also uh, the time when we uh, worked together. Uh, he worked with me and with others uh, during that time and produced some very nice results. In particular, this was also a very fruitful time uh, when uh, both Luis and uh, uh, Sergei Denisov uh, cooperated together and uh, so to say opened a new avenue in the direction of quantum ratchets. And after that, uh, Luis moved to a departmental research fellow at the National University of Singapore, where he spent another two years and then he landed a faculty position at the Pontificia or Pontificia, I'm not sure how to pronounce it correctly, Universidad Católica de Chile, Santiago, Chile, uh, where he was uh, then uh, moved up the ladder in uh, the two years ago to an associate uh, professor. And uh, we kept always uh, some good interaction with Luis and actually I was I visited uh, him once in 2014 at uh, this uh, Pontificia Universidad Católica de Chile. So anyway, uh, long story. Uh, it's great to have you with us, uh, Luis, today. Unfortunately, only in this virtual mode, but uh, thanks God, you, at least that is working. And uh, we are now looking forward to your uh, presentation on harnessing currents for spectroscopy in small ring lattices with binary mixtures. So please, the floor is yours. Hello to everyone. So first of all, I would like to thank the, the organizers um, for the introduction and for the opportunity to show my work. <clears throat> this work is a, is a proposal for doing a new kind of a spectroscopy. Uh, this spectroscopy relies on the, on the motion of call atoms in real lattices. 
And that's why <clears throat> this is aimed to certain specific uh, area of coal atom physics, which is usually called atomtronics. That's why here I show you two, two panels, two, two figures, um, but two images. On the, on the right image, we have uh, electronic circuits, but on the left image, we have um, this is basically a condensate inside the toroidal trap. Actually, this is a, the first realization of uh, atom circuits. So briefly speaking, this spectroscopy um, it consists in applying an interaction quench between the two species of this binary mixture. And as a result of that, you will expect the fluctuation in the, in the current. So then if you perform a Fourier analysis of, um, of the evolution of the, of the current of the coal atoms, then you will detect the, the many particle hole excitations and by doing so, you can make a characterization of the many body ground state of the system. This is basically the whole idea of doing this, uh, this, what this is spectroscopy about, okay? So you can find actually the, the, the work here in this, in this reference. So this is a joint collaboration with two members of our institute in our university, Sebastian Reyes and Edward, uh, Edward Arevalo. And I would like to, to acknowledge um, financial support from our university and also from the National Agency for Research and Development of the Government of Chile. So this is a, the outline of my talk. First of all, I will give you, I already say a few things about, uh, about the, the motivation, <clears throat> but uh, I will say uh, further, uh, I will show you uh, more examples. How can we apply our spectroscopy to some setups, experimental setup. So later on, I will introduce the model. I will explain in details the main part of the model. And then <clears throat> I will start discussing some of the results of our research. So first of all, I will start uh, showing a phase diagram for a bose bose mixture where we have um, two types of interaction. We have a, a repulsive interaction between a species of the a particle of the same species and attractive interaction for particle of different species. So as a result of this uh, you know, interplay between this interaction, you can have a very rich phase diagram. We are going to focus in a certain region of a phase diagram. And there, and there in this region, we are going to show the energy spectrum for this. Um, we are plan to characterize um, the ground state of, this, uh, of these uh, phases using some of the standard techniques that has been used in the past, uh, I mean, in experiments. So the idea is, late, uh, after that, compare with the spectroscopy that we propose. So one of the, one of the part of the, this phase diagram that we want to explore is, is one of the, um, you can find a very exotic phase, which is usually referred to as a per superfluidic phase. For those who are not familiar with this phase, this is nothing but uh, the bosonic counterpart of a BCS phase in, super, in superconductivity. So here you will expect the pairing of particles and tunneling of pairs through the lattice. And this is very nice uh, to study uh, this kind of system. So <clears throat> finally, we, we discuss in full detail the spectroscopy. What is this uh, spectroscopy about? Basically, we are going to analyze the cases where we have half filling and integer filling. In the case where we have integer filling, so we are trying to compare with the some phases of the phase diagram. Have in mind that we are talking about a small system, so we don't pretend to explain the whole the, the, the whole phase diagram. So we are trying to basically grasp some of the main features of these phases in the phase diagram. Um, I, 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 I plan to, com to convince you that we can actually detect some of these uh, features. Mm -hmm. So, <clears throat> and then I will conclude. No? We, I will present the main conclusion uh, of our work. So the, the motivation. I, <clears throat> so as I said, our work is uh, aimed to some specific area of coal atoms, which is usually called atomtronics. Basically, you have atoms moving in, 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 a, in a circuit. And this is a very emerging area, is, um, uh, which is, is drawing a lot of attention because you can study a lot of phenomena. 
for instance, you can study uh, matter wave interference. So in principle, it is expected that the, the using this, studying this kind of phenomenon, you can build probably in the future uh, devices where you can have uh, very accurate uh, measurements. Mm -hmm. You can perform very accurate measurements. <clears throat> so the, the, um, I want to show you an example, one of the pioneer works in this area. Which is, uh, which is an experimental work done in a group of Gretchen Campbell in Maryland, <clears throat> where they have basically, where well, condensate is, move, is, a, is trapped in a toroidal, in a toroid. So you have a toroidal trap, you have a condensate inside, and they shine a laser beam. And what is interesting, this is um, the first experimental work they, they use this word, atomtronic circuit. And what is interesting here is that the, this, uh, this laser beam is actually a blue tuning laser beam. So it created like a, a repulsive potential. So it created a low density region here. As you rotate this uh, laser beam, then this low density region start to rotate you know, <clears throat> as well. Mm -hmm. And because of the presence of a critical velocity, you know, according to Landau, we know that the, there is a critical velocity about which the superfluid start to lose uh, its properties. So it start to, to, to interact with the um, elementary excitations. So it create elementary excitation is a kind of dissipation. And, and therefore, uh, as a result of that, this process, then you have, a, you have the formation of a hysteresis. You know, in the parameter space, you have a hysteresis. So this is actually the, the first, uh, one of the iconic works in, done in this, uh, in this area. So this is a, a condensate inside of a toroidal trap, but nowadays it's possible to build optical lattices with different, you know, <clears throat> a ring, no? with di many different uh, sites. And in principle, it's possible to reduce even more. Well, here there are 10, 10, 10 wells, but in principle, you can reduce it to, to four. And the, our goal was actually to do similar spectroscopy in a small system. So I actually show you this, these two nice work where they actually, well, this has nothing to do with the atomtronics, but they study, for instance, they call atoms physics in, in, in plaquettes, in plaquettes, and then they, these plaquettes actually can replicate in a 2D lattice. So for instance, in this work, they study, the, they characterize the, the ground state of the system where they have spin down and spin, spin up, yeah? <clears throat> and they actually make a characterization, a full characterization of the ground state for this small system. And our idea was to do the similar stuff, but using, you know, <clears throat> breaking some symmetry in the system, just generating a current. And by analyzing this current, we can make a similar characterization, okay? So the model. The model I already said that we are going to study uh, two types of particles. So two, two, uh, basically, we study Bose Bose mixture of particles moving in a ring. Well, this is a little bit fake because this is not a toroidal trap, but um, here basically we have a lattice. So we have, we call particle A and particle B. And the Hamiltonian for this is basically described by the sum of the Hamiltonian for each independent species plus the Hamiltonian for interaction between the species. And here the interaction on the Hamiltonian interaction is given by, is written down here. You see that you have, um, is, uh, is basically um, given by the interaction between particles in, in, in sight, in each side of the, of the lattice. So here we, we appeal to the, what is called a tight banding approximation, where this is a, is a good approximation for using this kind of an interaction. So here, <clears throat> what is interesting here, if we have a, a minus B, B is positive, and this minus signs indicate that we are dealing with the attractive interaction. So <clears throat> since we are dealing in this, uh, in the regime where we have a tight binding approximation, this is basically you have in, in each site, we have a local interaction between particles of different species. This is in the case where you have a, this Hamiltonian interaction. But in the case for a single species, we have the so-called, well, this is probably you are very familiar with this Hamiltonian. This is a bose haber model. This is a Hamiltonian for a, a single species. Here, basically we have three main terms. 
The first uh, terms account for the kinetic part, where J is the, the tunneling rate. The second one is the, um, the local on-site interaction, where U is uh, positive, right? This is the, actually, this is a, a repulsive interaction. And the third one is <clears throat> basically on-site energy, right? So in this case, um, even though you reduce the number of degree of freedom, uh, you have to deal with the combinatorial, which grow very rapidly. So in this case, we, we have to keep the, the system size very small, you know, in, because we have to, we, we do exact diagonalization, we deal with exact diagonalization. If you want to, to deal, <clears throat> if, we, if you want to analyze a larger system, then you have to resort to a more powerful techniques, such as the DMRG. If you want to do dynamics, you have to deal with a time dependent DMRG. So in this case, well, you can, we, we basically do exact diagonalization. Well, it is known that the, with this kind of a system, even though it's, uh, it's a reduction of the, of the whole dynamics, no? <clears throat> so it's, it's uh, basically, it has been used for doing what is called um, quantum simulator, quantum simulator. So nowadays it's possible to study, for instance, with this kind of system phase transitions. So in the, for instance, in this case, you can study, for instance, the, the motin to later to superfluid transition. So you can study many processes that are present in, 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 in condensed matter physics, you no, know, in standard condensed matter physics, solid state physics, right? <clears throat> so, but since we want to introduce current in the system, we need to modify a little bit the, the, the bose haber uh, Hamiltonian, and therefore we modify the kinetic part such as that we introduce what is called a pyre phase. With this pyre phase, basically you, you break the time reversal symmetry. And if you have an array of rings here, for instance, to the lattice, you have uh, the generation of uh, current in, this, uh, in these small rings. So here, basically you can do it uh, this, uh, you can store this information no? by replicating this, by having many, an array of this ring. Okay, so now let's come to the to the results. So I, I, first of all, I want I would like to show you the phase diagram. This is not uh, our result. This is a, a recent result published by other groups. This is a phase diagram for a Bose Bose uh, uh, mixture. So the, <clears throat> here is the, the phase diagram, and this is a phase diagram um, published in this uh, very recently in this paper. And here, what they show you is that the well on this axis they have this parameter r, which is one plus u a b over u. They consider u a b less than zero, so it's a negative. And on this axis they have uh, u over t, where t is basically our j. So <clears throat> in this case, if we come up to our uh, uh, problem, then basically u a b is equal to minus b. So uh, we want uh, to Louis, Louis, two questions. Yeah. First of all, you have something called V uh, to the right of your plot. UAB equals minus V. What is this minus V? Minus V is, as I said in the beginning, so was uh, when I introduced um, the Hamiltonian interaction was this. Yeah, you know, this was the, the strain of the, of the uh, attractive interaction. So that's what is called UAB in this plot. Exactly, exactly. Okay. So, so this, this is attractive interaction. Uh, uh, the attractive interaction, correct. Okay, and uh, what is then u in the on the x-axis? What is that? U uh, is the um, the normal repulsive the strain of the repulsive interaction. Oh, I, so when when I introduce it, the the Bose. So, so this is u. It interacts with a repulsive interaction with each other and with an attractive interaction between species. Yes, so we have, uh, I said that we have, in this bose bose mixture, we have um, attractive interaction okay. between particles of different species and repulsive interaction for the particles of the same species. Okay. 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 So in this case, they, well, in this axis, they plot this parameter R, which is pl uh, one plus UAB over U, 
And we want to explore the, um, the, the region where B is in the order of U. So that case is correspond to the case where R is close to zero. Namely, we have a line below just this axis, right? But we also demand J to be much smaller than U, which is equivalent to say that U over T is much larger than one. So we will we'll explore a region around here, right? And the reason why, because in, in this case, when you have a competition between this attractive and repulsive interaction, then you can have pairing of particles. This is a, one of the main reasons. Okay, so, <clears throat> so for that, we plot the energy spectrum in the case where J is much smaller than one, we pick uh, the value for instance 0.01, later on we are going to increase this value, but first of all, we, we plot this energy spectrum, we see that the, well, this is uh, for the, um, the lowest energy levels, here the red line corresponds to the ground state of the system, and we consider three characteristic states, so we consider, for instance, the, the, the state where B is slightly below U, where B is uh, equal U, and for B, slightly above U, right? So in this case, we will expect the behavior such as a most insulator state, because here, if you continue this region, then you will have a most insulator state here, and then you will have a very narrow region, which corresponds to almost a point, and then something which we call a collapse state, which corresponds to the case where B overcome U. That means that the, 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 the attractive interaction is, becomes dominant over the repulsive interaction. So basically we have three kinds of uh, characteristic states. And what we plan to do is to do a similar, uh, our spectroscopy to analyze these states, right? So first of all, I would like to first uh, make a characterization using some uh, of the standard techniques. So we know that the, for instance, in the case where we have a single species, it is known that we can use for instance, the momentum distribution to study for instance, uh, the, the transition from the mod insulator state to the superfluid state. So this is basically done in, a, in, in, in the past in this seminar paper by Greiner, <clears throat> and co-authors, where basically they have this, uh, this function, which is the momentum distribution. Here you have a two d lattice where you have a condensate. And since you have a superfluid state, then you have a phase coherence in the system. And if you remove the lattice, since you have a two d uh, d lattice, then you will have in the momentum space, you will have a very nice interference, uh, interference pattern. So these peaks, Basically, if you can actually compute experimentally or quantify the, the phase coherence just by uh, computing the difference between the peak with the largest intensity minus the peak with the lowest intensity divided by these two quantities. And this can give you a good estimation of the phase coherence in the system. So this is the case for the, uh, for the superfluid case. But in the case where you have a mod insulator state, there is no phase coherence. And therefore, when because the particles, you know, they 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 evolve independently, they don't see each other. And then when you you remove the 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 the, the potential, then you make them interfere, and then you get a flat distribution. So basically, you have no fluctuation at all. So here you have a vanishing uh, phase coherence in the system. So now the question is, can we use this tool for the description of our states for two species? Yes, we can use a similar uh, momentum distribution. This is actually for two species. We have a one, D, um, one dimensional system, but we have um, two components. So we have a momentum for each component. So we have a momentum for the particle A, momentum for the particle B. So we have a, a similar a pattern or um, momentum distribution in 2D. Mm -hmm. So let's analyze the, let's choose one of these uh, in the, let's go to the um, energy spectrum. So le let's take this case where we have uh, this avoiding crossing. So this is a more interesting case because 
This actually corresponds to the pair superfluid case. Yeah. So we, if we show this, the, the moment of distribution, we see a very nice pattern. So you have a stripes. And what is interesting is where well, this stripe appear along the anti-diagonal. If you move along these stripes, there is no variation. There are no fluctuation. Therefore, the, the phase coherence is, is zero. But while if you move along the dia diagonal, then you observe the largest contrast between the peaks. That means that the, you have the largest phase coherence in the system moving along the diagonal. And this happens when the, the velocity, the momentum are the same. So when the, the velocity of the particles for A and B are the same. So this is actually is a manifestation. This is actually correspond to the case where we have a per superfluidic case. So a per, super, per superfluidic uh, state is actually in a state where particles, the pairs, in this case, since we have the, uh, two type of uh, particles of different species, so they form pairs between particles of different species and they tunnel through the lattice in pairs. Usually, if you have a, a perfect per superfluidic state, then you have a singular tunnel, uh, tunneling process are uh, vanishing, they vanish. So you have tunneling of pair, which is actually described by this quantity. So basically you have, this is a sketch. I show you how they, they <clears throat> this uh, can, can occur, no? Okay, so we have a momentum distribution, but now can we use another quantity that can give us a quantification of the pair superfluidity in the system? Well, yes, we can build uh, second order correlation function, which is basically give, is written down here. You see that the, this is basically a, the first time account for a, the, the tunneling of pairs, but here you have, a, a, we subtract the, the terms that account for a single process. Mm -hmm. So if you have only single process, single tunneling process, then basically this quantity um, drops to zero. If you have a no, single tunneling process, then this becomes completely zero. And then you get the maximal value given by this uh, tunneling of pair. So the, <clears throat> basically when, you, if you plot this, for instance, we, we, we consider first the half filling case. We see that the, in the case where B is uh, equal to U, namely when the, the, you get the balance between these two types of interaction, then you get the maximal value for this, this peak. Well, what is surprising is that this doesn't drop to zero when you get away a little bit from this point, and then you get a, this um, plateau or shoulder. Right? You only drop to zero when it gets uh, when b becomes zero, right? So if we plot now the the momentum distribution for a characteristic state, you see that the, again we see this uh, nice picture of where you have a stripes. So this is a manifestation that actually we are in the presence of a pair superfluid state. Here there is another state which is similar to this one. There are small tiny differences. So you see kind of a squeezing here, but it's very hard to detect this in experiment. Um, well, in the case where B is equal to zero, then you get these uh, two uh, superfluid uh, which are independent. Right? For uh, Louis, a question. Uh, so what kind of, what, what states do you do use here? The ground state of the system or what? The ground you... state of the system. And Just what the... I want to say is that they, okay, this is a, a small system, okay? So later on, I wanna show you that the, with the spectroscopy, we can explain some of this main difference, right? Um, yeah. So, but there is another interesting state, which is uh, the case where B. I and mean, and where what, the, is, what is the uh, the uh, the hopping strength? The hopping strength is very small, so I can write it down. It's, it's, well, I just tell it. Tell it the number. It's J over U is uh, 0.01, which is very small. Very small. I'm I'm surprised you see any kind of indication of transport there, right? Because uh, if you see some correlations between key. QA and QB, it looks at least like, oh, yes, you have some, uh, there is something, uh, there are pairs and the pairs uh, fine and the pairs move somehow, but perhaps yes. or at some uh, non-zero dispersion, so to say. Uh, but uh, this must be extremely weak, right? 
Yeah, well, I will show you that the, the, the fluctuations in the, in when we do this uh, quench are quite large. So the, the contribution uh, for the states, for the important folk states to the ground state are quite important, no? When you have, for instance, the formation of pairs and tunneling of pairs. So we come to that point. And we also, we, we were also concerned about the same. So we increase also the hopping uh, strength, no? To, to see whether it is still, you know, applicable, no? But let me, let me tell you about this, uh, this state. So this state is also interesting from the physical point of view because it actually corresponds to the case where uh, the, the attractive interaction overcome the repulsive interaction. And if you diagonalize the system, if you look at the Fox state, basically this corresponds to the case where all the particles gather in a single site. So then you have like a big particle. So you, it, it means that the, 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 the defective mass becomes quite large. So it means that the, the, it's very difficult for the particle to tunnel th through the lattice. So the, basically the system behaves as an insulator because it's, uh, it's even smaller than the, than the value that the, F, because you have a very effective, very uh, small effective uh, tunneling rate no? in this case. So the, the, the phase coherence here is very low. And you see that the contrast between compared to the case where you have a super fluid is, is, um, is weak. So um, of course, if you increase the number of particles, this be, become even flatter. Mm -hmm. So, okay. Let's now enter in the discussion of the spectroscopy. I just want to give you a taste of what we are going to discuss later on. Right? So the spectroscopy. So as I said <clears throat> in the beginning, so we, we have this uh, interac uh, Hamiltonian interaction for interactions. And then what we do is just uh, modify the, um, the strain of the interaction. So we modify the B to BQ, where BQ is basically the, the, the new value for the, for the strain of interaction. So BQ we demand to be much larger than U and and, and you to resolve the peaks in the Fourier analysis, right? So if you now consider the ground state, the initial ground state of the system, which is basically written down here, is basically a, in, 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 in a combined state of particles A and B, where this is a vector N, is in the particles distributed in L sites. Hmm? Where L is the actually the, the number of lattice sites. If you apply the quench, then what we have is that the, the, the energy levels, I mean the, the, the four components of the initial ground state, they split, right? And this is important because um, there is something important here that I want to emphasize is that the this interaction is applied where you have uh, in the diagonal. So it is in the diagonal basis is applied this uh, quench. So basically what they do is just a splitting. There is no crossing between the energy level, the initial energy level. So basically the, the, um, the ground state that was overlapping with the Fox state components, they start to oscillate between these uh, energy levels, right? So, uh, um, and you can actually detect this in the current of particles. If you have a small current, but you can detect the fluctuations. And the fluctuation here, you see that the, the current could be almost zero, but then you have a very large fluctuations. And then you can actually detect them. I mean, you can do a, a Fourier analysis and detect the, the, the particle hole excitations. And with that, you can do a characterization of the ground state. So these are the half filling case where you have B for B, the, the three characteristic uh, scenarios where B is slightly below U, B is equal U, and B is equal, uh, uh, B is slightly above U. And here we have a uh, different harmonics, right? So we are now trying to gain sight of the presence of these harmonics. So we, we, we resort to the, so be, <clears throat> You can study the, the, the current for particle B or A. It, it doesn't matter. So it's in the case where we compute the current, 
here the, the current is determined by the evolution of the wave function, right? And if we neglect, for instance, the, since we are considering J is small, much smaller than U and B, then we can, in principle, for zero order uh, perturbation, we can neglect, for instance, the kinetic part in the, in the evolution of the, of the operator evolution. If we do so, then we basically we have in the in the diagonal basis, and then you you get this uh, very nice uh, expression for the current, which is a superposition of a very uh, several harmonics, and this uh, the frequency of these harmonics basically are given by the the energy gaps, which are a function of the u and bq. So, <clears throat> um, okay. So now we come to the Fourier uh, analysis. So here we have a systematic study of the, we swept over the, the, the parameter space, V over U. And we find that the, for V is uh, slightly below U, we have a single peak, spectral peak. For in the critical region, we have um, more than a single peak. And above that, we have a, a another single peak. So here is uh, basically the three uh, characteristic uh, states. Here, for instance, we have a single peak and here we have three main peaks, right? And he, well, in the case where B is slightly above U, we have uh, another single peak. And the frequency <clears throat> can be written are multiples of BQ and U, where N and M here are integer values. Okay. So now we can, we proceed to investigate a, a bit, a bit about these uh, spectral peaks. So let's come now to the first spectral peak. So in the first spectral peak, we, we look at the initial ground state of the system and we realize that these are the main four components of the, of the ground state of the system. Here basically what we have is, uh, where we have, in this case, we have two particles for each species. Here we see that the, the, you have two main four components where we have oscillation between these two four components. And what is interesting is in this, in the, in the top panel, we have a, a tunneling of a particle. And if you go down to the lower panel, you see that the, 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 the somehow you restore the, the pair of a particle. Here, you see that we have pairs, we have pairings. Well, we have single order uh, process. So in the pair superfluidic case, <clears throat> we have pairs, but in addition to that, we have tunneling of pairs through the lattice. Here we have only a single order process um, and we have pairs, but this is plain why we have a shoulder in the case where we analyze it and, you know, and when we compute this second order correlation function, this is plain why we have this shoulder why the, 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 um, this quantity doesn't drop to zero. So we have pairs, but we don't have a tunneling of pairs. Now let's come to the critical point. So the critical point, we have uh, uh, several peaks, as I said before. So we have um, many folk states which are involved in these spectral peaks. We see, for instance, as before, we have a single order process the, the, the process that I showed you before, but then we have a very striking, amazing uh, peak, which actually explain the present, or I mean the tunneling process of uh, pairs. And this is quite nice because it's a second order tunneling process. So to, to, to check this, to make a simple check, we just went back to the, to the simulations. We simulated the dynamics. We did the same as in analytics. So for instance, in the operator evolution, we just killed the, the kinetic part. And what we found is that the, in this peak, we, this is uh, disappear. So it's, it's killed. So if we plug it again into the equation and we evolve again the, the dynamics, we get the, the, this peak. So basically, if you do some perturbation theory, you treat the kinetic part as a perturbation, basically you get that the, the contribution of this second order process is the order of J squared. 
So how comes that this peak is so, is so big? So the intensity is comparable with this, the other process. No? So if you look at the ground state of the system, we see that the, the largest contribution of these, two folk, uh, of these two folk states are by far the largest uh, you know, contribution. No? So that explains why this uh, is so uh, large, the intensity is so large. Mm? So in this case, we are actually um, detecting the tunneling of pairs, not only the presence of pair, but also detecting the tunneling of pair. So this is actually a confirmation that we are in the presence of a pair superfluid phase or pair superfluid state. Mm? So there is another process which I mentioned here, but this actually is, becomes large. And in the case where we have B overcome U, and I, I already say a few things about that, and when you have this uh, collapse state, this collapse state is actually the case where we, all the particles gather in a single site. So to to detach single particle from this from this uh, big particle, you you require a lot of energy. Because here, in, in this case, particular case, you have that the, the, the attractive interaction overcome the repulsive interaction, right? So now we have done a characterization for the half in case for only few particles. But what happened, for instance, in the case where we have interchange feeling? So let's first come to the case where you increase the, the hoping. You were concerned about the hoping. So we, we increase the hoping and we see that this peak is start to increase again. If we keep increasing, we see that the steel remains. Obviously you have a chief because the kinetic part play also an ro important role in this process. But since we have a very large hopping, then single order tunneling process play a very important role. See here we, we are actually getting away of this uh, of this um, region where we have this. Um, so that means that the, in the avoiding crossing, you have a very large uh, region now. Okay. So but we are interested in comparing our result with the, this phase diagram. So we have to look at the interjet feeling to see whether some results at least have some uh, relation with this, uh, with the phases here. No? So we, we, we then plot the, this correlation function as a function in this uh, parameter space, B over U. And you see that the, this can give you a good indication where the, um, where the pair superfluid uh, is located. So it's exactly where B is on the order of U. It's, there is a balance between these two attractive and repulsive interaction. So then we plot also the, the momentum distribution. And we found that the, indeed, in this case, you have this per superfluidity uh, pattern for the per superfluidity phase. But on the left side, where B becomes slightly below you, you have this uh, pattern where you have a weak uh, contrast between the intensity peaks and this means that you have a, a low, um, small phase coherence. This is actually correspond to the case where you have a mod insulator state. Of course, here we, we have only few lattice sites. Right? We have only four lattice sites. So if you go to the, to the right side, we find that the, again, we see this uh, collapse state where particles try to gather in single site. So here we have now a lattice site. A, sorry, a, a, a particles. And again, we, we find this a pattern where you have a, a weak, a, I mean, low phase coherence. Uh, Luis, can so, you remind me, uh, you showed previously uh, kind of a similar uh, plot setup, but there uh, the result was very different because you still had, um, uh, you still had kind of pair correlations uh, for yeah. V less than U, what, what was different there? The difference is uh, that we, we I discussed the half filling case. 
So half filling is very different from the integer filling. Wait, so by half filling, you mean precisely what? I, I show you the, okay, so let me. Which is the same word. Yeah. Right, and 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 uh, and what do, what do you call integer filling is when both are equal to L? Exactly. But I mean, these are bosons, right? So, yes. so why is that so important? Are yeah, but, filling... okay. If all the particles, I mean, when you have integer filling, it's, it's hard to move, a, for instance, in the case where you have a multi insulator case. So you need an energy to move a particle, right? Or the order of U. So the, 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 the physics is the different when you have um, integer filling or not integer filling. Well, I, would say, I would say if I choose only one species and I put, uh, and I have L sites and I have L uh, uh, and, and have the same number of particles, uh, and then I add one more particle, that thing can slide uh, above all the rest in, in a very beautiful manner, right? Yes, so, yes. Yeah, while if I'm at uh, half filling, things are quite uh, different because everything is more or less uh, stuck because of the strong interaction. <clears throat> but anyway, I do understand that there are, of course, the things depend on, on, on the fillings. Yeah. I just wanted to understand what's different. So right now you are at, at integer. Yeah. So you showed right now was when the number of atoms for both species equals to the number of sites. Yeah, but if you look at this uh, um, phase diagram, so we, we said that, that we are analyzing in this region. Yeah. So let me let me let me roll, draw. Let me see that if we can draw the symmetry. So basically, we are around here. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. So, and then in this region, you will have um, basically a multi insulator state. You will have a, a very narrow region of a per superfluidity. And then you will have a collapse state. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And this is actually what we have here with this momentum distribution. Basically, you have uh, this state with a very low phase coherence on the left side and on the right side. Mm -hmm. And in the middle, you have this uh, peak, right? That quantified, uh, I mean, it tells you that the, you have a, indeed a, a phase coherent uh, per superfluid state. Okay. okay. Okay, so now let's come to the case where, where um, to the spectroscopy. <laughs> Here we have many peaks because also we increase also the number of particles. But what is interesting is that the, for B, slightly below U, you have a single peak, right? But the single peak is located exactly at the value of energy for U. This is ex the energy required to move a single particle when you are in the integer filling, right? And for the case where you have this B equal U, then you have many particles, but again, you have this uh, second order process. You have many other process, but uh, this accounts for the tunneling of pairs. So we, we confirm that the, in the case where we have uh, integer filling, we also have this second order tunneling process. And for the case where B is slightly above U, then you have this uh, also peak, which is, and what is interesting is that the, if you go across this uh, critical region, you move, you shift from a frequency which is very low to a large frequency. So this is give you a good indication that you are moving uh, across a critical point, right? Uh, this region. Okay, so now let's come again to the to the phase diagram. So. I already said that we analyze it for J over U much smaller than one, which is equivalent to say that U over T is much uh, larger than, than one, okay? So but what happens if you increase the value of J? 
In this case, we increase it for to the value of 0.05. And this guy claimed that they, they can actually observe more than a phase with the pair superfluid properties. This is a, I didn't mention that, but the, there are plenty of phases here. This is a pair superfluid phase. This is a, another phase which is calling the literature droplet per superfluid phase. This is a whole new class of um, uh, ultra dilute uh, quantum liquids, right? Because it's, uh, yeah, um, but with the, with the property of per superfluid. So then if we plot our, if we do analysis, uh, for this analysis, we see that the, we see that the, around this region, B over U, you have many peaks, but uh, very near of this region, then you have, a, you have a very different state, which might explain why you have this, uh, another kind of a uh, phase here. And afterwards, well, this peak, which is correspond to the case where it accounts for the tunneling of pairs, eventually disappear. So it should disappear because in, <clears throat> in this case, if you are in the thermodynamic limit, we will be in the, the system will be in the, in the mot insulator state. So of course this doesn't vanish because in, in this region is because we have dealing with a fine site uh, system. But if you increase the, 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 the size of a system, right, uh, we, we hope that the, this actually will reduce the, the region. So we will have something like this. So, by, but what I want to show you is by doing this uh, spectroscopy, we are able to detect similar features as they did, you know, in the, so we can able to predict where, or to detect uh, some regions in the, in this, uh, in this uh, parameter space. <clears throat> okay, so with that, I come to the conclusion. So first of all, I hope that I show you that we, that with the kernel of particles, we can use it to probe ground state with distant properties in potential, in a small but potential important mesoscopic systems. And we have shown that the spectro uh, spectroscopy method is able to unambiguously detect uh, the tunneling of pairs in binary mixtures, which may have potential application in the field of atomtronics. And we have also shown that the frequency shift depends on the number of particles can, can be used to detect the presence of a critical points in, in the phase. Yeah. So with that, I would like to thanks for attention. I think. So, so I'm ready for Lawrence. questions. Yeah. And uh, the floor is open to questions from the audience. Uh -huh. who, who, who raised a hand before? <laughs> who was the first? Ivan, no? Ivan? I think no one raised the hand, but there was some hand clapping. This is different from raising the hand. Uh, so let me. Uh -huh. uh, let me ask you one, one more maybe question I'll ask too many maybe. Uh, you introduced at the beginning these phases uh, in the hoppings, these uh, complex- uh, Ah, okay, phases. in the kinetic. Yes, are you, are you keeping them here and uh, in all these yes. calculations? Yes, and, yes. Uh, I, I somehow missed some statement on them. So how, what are the values and what is important or not or what happens when you vary these uh, Phases. Okay, yeah, the, the, the pyre phase, you mean the pyre phase? Yes. So these are important in order to, to detect the, the tunneling process. If you, if you kill this D phase, then the whole process, you know, the, the detection so what, will of the, with, what will happen with your results if you change or uh, zero this phase? Can you just comment briefly on that? No, no. As long as you have a phase which is um, uh, produce a net current, then you will have these fluctuations. 
So if you have a phase, if you have no phase or a phase that produces zero current for both species, you can have a, a zero um, phases for a single species because the the, the system are the, the species are intertwined yeah. between each other. Then the, the the only requirement is that you have a species where you have a phase. That's that's it. But Fine, but what happens in, if in you simulation? Can you can you use, just say what happens to your results which you showed to us? Uh, what how will they change if you zero both phases? What will happen? Or the peaks disappear? I don't know what. Or the no fluctuation. No fluctuation. Well, I mean, you can still take a ground state and compute something with that ground state. You can compute expectation values and God knows what. What will yeah. be different? Yeah, but I will, I will, I wouldn't detect anything in the in the current. No, but you would still uh, uh, compute your correlations, for instance. What will happen in this? I will detect. Uh, yeah, I can compute the correlations, but I cannot detect the, with the the fluctuations in the in the current. I can compute these quantities. Yes, sure. Yeah, and then how will these correlation uh, 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 these correlations change their dependence uh, on you or whatever you were plotting? On the X no, the, the, this correlation depends on the value of a uh, interaction strain. And so how will, for instance, this pair, this what you call your pair superfluids in this picture, how will that change? No, that, that, that won't change. Would not? Would not change. Okay. So therefore you don't need these phases, right? So where, where, where are these phases? No, 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 I, I need, I need this phase because I, <laughs> I, I need a, I mean, our contribution is to do a spectroscopy with the current. So if, if I cannot detect this fluctuation in the current, how can I, I do a spectroscopy? Okay, thank you. Uh, I think there's a question by Ivan. Ivan, please unmute and ask. Ivan. Hi. I don't see. Ah, okay. So since you asked, I give a question. Uh, what about uh, this Bose Bose mixture, which you mentioned? So I didn't quite get uh, what particular uh, bosons you consider are they different or the same, and how it's physically realized? Uh, so how how does it work, and what particularly do you want to consider there? Yeah, well, there are several papers where they realize this uh, with the potassium. So they have a Bose Bose with the you know it could be the same type of a, a, a species. I mean, um, sorry, uh, type of atoms, for instance, potassium, but the different, well, could be in ground state or excited state. Or, so they actually, <clears throat> they consider as a two, two species hmm, in, a, in, a, in experiments. So with that, you can actually have the same tunneling rate in the in 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 lattice. Hmm. So the, but this, this I don't is... quite understand. It seems to me if you have the same atoms, like potassium mm -hmm. or any other, there will be one ground state instead, instead of several. So why would they uh, be split into two uh, subsystems? No, 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 no. Okay, okay, but okay. So one is the um, um, same. They are considered like two species, uh, two type of particles. You treat it like two type of particles. And then you make them interact, right? The, the question is not how you treat them. The question is what they are. So uh, if I remember correctly, you take, uh, say, a, a gas of uh, ultra cold atoms, and then you somehow manage experimentally to excite, let's say, one half of them into an excited state. Yeah. Okay. And then you manage you to run them. the experiment such that uh, the, these excited uh, atoms First of all, they can behave very differently and interact with the non-excited atoms in a very different way because excitations means that you somehow, uh, there, there are, well, it depends on the type of, uh, of electronic uh, charge distributions, right, around these atoms when you excite them. Yeah, so well. they, they start to interact in a different way with the, with the atoms which are in the, so to say, in the ground state or not excited. And during the experiment, somehow, for some reason, uh, the both numbers are preserved. So you don't kill the excited uh, atoms. You don't excite the ground state atoms. So they become 
two distinguishable species and that's yeah. it so yeah. and then so you have to the experimentalists have to make sure that this is uh, working right yeah but i know the experimentalists <laughs> I know sure, the experiment but I think this this is uh, you, it's not a matter of considerations this is what they do and if they yeah, can achieve that, then uh, they have two different uh, bosonic species even which how uh, do these atoms interact between each other well, oh, they, they can, they, 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 this is what is called um, fresh bar resonance in experiment where they call, it depends on the um, uh, scattering length. So, so, how, so how they manage to, to couple these to, to, to type of species, right? And okay, this is a known phenomenon, now I understand. Uh, what about phases of these atoms? Can they be in some particular state like uh, BC, for example? So, sorry, c c coming in? So do you just consider atoms in normal state or you can have a B uh, BC transition? No, we consider just the, 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 the ground state of the, the binary mixture. So none of the subsystems with a condensate phase, right? No. Okay, thanks. Okay, other questions? Well, uh, since uh, people are maybe still thinking, let me ask another question. So your system size in your numerics was what, eight sides? Yes. And the number of particles? Oh, yeah, okay. Okay. Uh, no, 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 no. In this case, particular case, we consider only four lattice sites. Four lattice sites, okay. Yes. For a half filling case. Pretty small systems, right? Pretty small system, yes. Mm -hmm. And, and another the, question, you know? Yeah. yeah. No, go ahead, go ahead. And for the? For the interior filling, we also, uh, we have four, four particles for each, uh, for, each, uh, for each species. I have a question to about this uh, atomtronics, which you mentioned at the beginning. Okay. Um, I think it, the idea and, and uh, some uh, labs trying to realize these ideas uh, have been around for quite a long time. I haven't really seen, but maybe I'm just not following well the literature, some uh, major breakthrough there in the sense that uh, you really set up uh, a complex or more complicated <clears throat> chip, so to say, atomic chip. Uh, which, as you showed at the beginning, uh, resembles a bit uh, the structure of, uh, uh, of of the usual chips, which uh, yeah. uh, which are used uh, in electronics. Yeah. Uh, right, but but my question is actually not that. So my question maybe is, what can you comment on the uh, on on the state of the art in this? Uh, how complex? How how advanced the did uh, uh, the, uh, the, the studies uh, and the labs which, which run these uh, systems uh, advance, how far did they advance in this atomtronics uh, business? And my second related question is, how do you actually create currents there in general? What, what do they do? How do they manage to, uh, to create some kind of chemical potential drop or whatever so that the atoms start to uh, to flow in the directions you want to push them. Okay, let, let me start with the second question because I, uh, okay, the, in the, um, you can actually induce this uh, pyre phase physically, you know, um, by in, with assisting with a laser beam. I see. So this actually, with, actually this belongs to a hot area within the coal atoms community. Which is uh, it's called a synthetic magnetic field. Yeah, but a synthetic magnetic field, in some sense, doesn't really create. Uh, how should I say? It doesn't create a uh, a chemical potential uh, drop. So uh, similar to a voltage drop in an electronic system, you know, you apply a voltage drop, and then you get the current flowing through it. Uh, here, this what you say is you just switch on. So to say, some synthetic magnetic field. Yeah, 
Okay. Maybe that's enough. I don't know. I never thought about that. Yeah, okay. Let, 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 I, I just prepare a slide for that, but I just keep it because um, um let me. Yeah, I know that they, nowadays it's possible to, to realize this. Um, let me come to this. Okay, so here. So people try to emulate this magnetic field, or they can basically create the, these um, equations, you know, similar to equations of, uh, of electrons moving in 2D lattice in the presence of a magnetic field. And they emulate the presence of this magnetic field just by, well, they take the lattice. And basically what they do is just uh, with another laser, they assist the tunneling process. And if you go in a square lattice, you know, around a plaquette, basically what you have is you, you gain a, you accumulate the phase. So this is equivalent to have a magnetic flux. But the, the, the way they do is just, uh, there are several proposals, but one of the proposals is just uh, with another laser. But to be honest, uh, the physics is very, it's very complicated. But, but the, there are several experiments where you can actually have a permanent, uh, persistent, what they call persistent currents particles. Okay. And these pi phases actually generated with this, uh, can be created with this, uh, uh, another laser beam. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is. Uh, sorry. Thank you. Okay. Uh, audience, other questions, please. Well, if it uh, is not the case, then probably we should uh, finish. And uh, I know, Jusa, did you prepare? A, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, yeah, let's thank our speaker. Guys. And, uh, okay. Yeah, so for this. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry, uh, just wanted to make the last announcement that for this particular talk, we'll not have a focused discussion session because it's quite late in Chile. And I think Lewis uh, would like to probably head to bed now. So uh, let's thank. Oh. Yeah, I can. Uh, we can have a chat, Luis. Uh, anyone else who wants can stay as well, but uh, don't feel. Yeah, but it'll be a short uh, session. Short, so. A short uh, after seminar discussion. Mm -hmm. Good. All right. Uh, Luis, let me just grab a. Uh, just stay tuned. Let me just grab a coffee and come back in two minutes, okay?